In this video we're going to try anti-differentiation, which you would have done last year, which is the opposite of differentiating. So if you differentiate to get to this, the process of going backwards is anti-differentiating. We're going to tie that together with the indefinite integral. Okay, so anti-differentiation is the opposite process of differentiating. Okay, so if you start with x to the power of n, if you differentiate, you decrease the power by 1 and put the original power at the front. Or if you like, you multiply by the original power and then decrease the power by 1. So this is what you do when you differentiate. So if we're going to anti-differentiate, what we need to do is to do the opposite of these things. So what we need to do to get back to our original function from here is first of all, this power needs to go up by 1. Okay, So we're going to add 1 to the power, increase power by 1. And that will give us a value of n at the top. Then we need to get rid of this times by n at the front. So we're going to divide by n, which is going to be our new power when we've increased it by 1. So let me go through that again. To anti-differentiate, you increase the power of x by 1, and then you divide the whole term by that new power. So that's the process of anti-differentiation. Now let's have a look at the process of integrating an indefinite integral. So the indefinite integral is this symbol here. Okay. Now when you're writing your integrals in your exams, here's some tips. Make sure that you've got curves at the top and the bottom. Make sure you've got the dx. And when you do your integration, don't forget the plus c on the end. Okay. So you can differentiate here are some examples of some indefinite integrals. So here we're differentiating with respect to x. Here we're differentiating with respect to t. And this integral here actually has an x and a t in it. But it tells you which variable we're going to carry out the differentiate the anti-differentiation pattern on. Okay, so even though there's a t and an x in here, it, because we're doing the anti-differentiation with respect to x, it's x that we use the pattern on, and t is just like a constant. So this symbol here we read as the indefinite integral of something with respect to x, or more simply just the integral of whatever the function is in here, dx is what we say. So that's how we say it here. So if we integrate 2x dx, we get x squared plus c, where c is our constant of integration. And we have a constant of integration because we're using the idea that if this was the original function, when we do the derivative, we get this formula here. So if our original function was x squared, the derivative is 2x. If our original function is x squared plus 2, when we do the derivative on that, we also get 2x. If our original function was x squared minus 5, what we get for our derivative, you guessed it, 2x. And so no matter what this constant is here on the end, whenever we find a derivative, it's always going to be 2x. So we have this definition here, that the integral of f of x dx is equal to capital F of x, which is the name that we give to the formula, the label that we give to the formula. It's the antiderivative function, okay, and it's a capital F, plus C, which is our constant of integration. Okay, so let's do some integrating, which is what you call it when you anti-differentiate, when you've got the integral symbol in front. All right, so remember, that if we're differentiating, these are our rules, but if we're anti-differentiating, these are our rules. So our rules are increase the power by 1. So here's our power, n. We're going to increase it by 1, and that gives us n plus 1 as our new power. And then we divide the whole term by the new power. And you can see I've divided by our new power. 
and we write plus C on the end. I should have that put on there and then add plus C on the end. Now this only works if your power of N is not negative 1 because if this is negative 1 when you increase the power by 1 minus 1 plus 1 is 0 that's okay X to the 0 is 1 but when you try to divide by 0 can't do that so that's where you hit some problems so that's all that this is saying here that you can't integrate X to a power of minus 1 using this particular pattern here okay so here are some examples find the general antiderivative of 4x to the power of 5 and number 2 integrate 2x cubed plus 3x squared plus 5 with respect to x so let's just go ahead and do these so we need to increase our power by 1 and divide by the new power so I've started to do both of these let's look at this one here so the general antiderivative I find by integrating I take the term that I've got and I write it over here so this is 4x and now I'm going to look at the power I've got my plus c written already so you can write plus c at the start or you can try and remember to do it at the end whichever way you do it you've got to end up with a plus c at the, at the final answer anyway all right so our original power is 5 we need to increase that by 1 so that makes our new power 6 and then we divide the whole term by 6 and if we can we simplify that term so you can cancel the 2 and the 6 the 2 and the 6 the 4 and the 6 so it becomes 2 x to the 6 on 3 plus c and we're done this one here I'm going to integrate each of these terms individually and you can see here that I've got a constant on the end so how do I integrate a constant well the constant is in fact just 5 times 1 and x to the power of 0 is in fact 1 so with a constant if you've got it times x to the 0 it's actually 1 so any constant you, it can be like uh, 3x to the 0 is equal to 3 5x to the 0 is equal to 5 so any constant is in fact a power of uh, x to the power of 0 kind of in disguise so I write it in here so that I remember to follow the pattern for 0 all right so we're going to work on these one term at a time so our original for our first term our original power is 3 we increase that by 1 so that becomes 4 and we divide the whole new term by 4 then for our next term we write the term without the power our original power is 2 we increase that by 1 to give us 3 divide by the new power 3 and finally our constant term our original power was 0 we increase that by 1 to give us 1 and divide by the new power which is 1 now I'm going to go through you can see I've already got my plus C there we're going to go through and simplify that so cancelling in the first term by 2 gives us X to the 4 over 2 in the second term cancelling by 3 gives us X cubed and in the four in the third one 5 divided by 1 is just 5 and X to the power of 1 we normally just write as X and of course we've got our plus C on the end so that's how you apply the pattern of anti-differentiation to integrals if you wanted to go ahead and try the questions in the exercise that do just that um, then go ahead um, and pause the video and go ahead and do that um, the next thing I'm going to show you is the relationship between integrals derivatives and functions okay so we started off this video with this image here we, if we start with x to the n we differentiate we get this um, formula here so this is our derivative formula and then if we wanted to go back the opposite process of differentiation is anti-differentiation so if this is our original function we could call this function f of x 
and if we differentiate f of x, we get the derivative. So if we differentiate f of x, we get the derivative. And so just following through on the arrow coming backwards, if we take a derivative and we anti-differentiate it, we get back to the original function, almost. Okay. So you would think that you would have it as if the, the integral of f of x, f dashed of x dx, the uh, integral of the derivative should give you the original function plus c. But what you actually get is not the original function, but part of the formula for the original function. Part of the formula. And that part of the formula plus the c, they combine together to give you f of x. I know it's confusing with capital F as f's and lowercase f. Okay, but to find the actual original function, you need to find out what that particular c is, because this represents a family of functions. So we can do the same idea over here with y and dy dx. So if you integrate the derivative, you get back to almost the original function plus c. There's no capital F notation really here for um, the y component of this. So that's why we normally use this capital F of x. And you'll normally see integration written with function notation rather than your um, dy dx notation. So let's have a look at a few examples. Okay, and I've chosen some examples that are going to have strange powers because we need to work with those as well. So first one, given that f of x, f dashed of x is equal to 1 over x cubed, find f of x. So we're going to need to integrate this. So we're going to integrate 1 over x cubed dx. And I like to write it so that I have x and uh, just a power, not um, 1 over x or anything like that. So I would like to have that written as x to the minus a third, no uh, minus a third, minus 3. And then that allows me to use the pattern on it much simpler. And now I need to be careful with my plus 1 um, and divide by. Okay, so our original power is minus 3. So we're going to increase that power by 1. So minus 3 plus 1 is minus 2. And then we divide by the new power, which is minus 2, and put our plus c on the end. So now I'm going to tidy this notation up. So the divide by minus 2, I can actually write as 1 over minus 2 times. And then I've got x to the minus 2 plus c. And x to the minus 2, I can write as 1 over x squared plus c. And now I can multiply those two fractions together. 1 over 2x squared, and that's negative. Now, whether I put the negative at the front here, at the top here, at the bottom, it doesn't really matter um, as long as the overall fraction is negative. Okay, So minus at the top doesn't make any difference to the value if you had the minus on the bottom as long as there's only one minus or if you had the minus hanging out the front. So this is minus out the front plus c. So that is our f of x. For our second example, we are going to um, anti-differentiate. We're going to integrate this function here. And again, I'm going to write everything with just powers. So as you can see, I've got x to the power, uh, power of 2 thirds, plus I've written this square root of x as x to the power of a half. So now I'm going to use my pattern on these one at a time. So I'm going to start with the first term. So our original power is 2 thirds. I'm going to need to add 1 to that. And so sometimes it's easiest to add it as a fraction on the side. So I want to add 1, but I'm adding to a fraction. So I'm actually going to write my 1 as 3 out of 3. And then I'm going to divide this whole thing 
by the new power, whatever that works out to be. And our new power is add the numerators together. So we've got two thirds plus three thirds, that gives us five thirds. So divide by five over three. And I'll tidy this up in a minute. You'll see what happens while I've done that in a minute. Plus x to the power of our original power was a half. We want to add one to that. So I'm going to add one in the form of two over two and then divide by the new power that I've got. So I've got one half plus two halves. That gives me three halves plus c. Plus C, just squeeze that in on the end there, come on, plus C. Okay, so now I've got X to the 5 on 3, divide by 5 over 3, plus X to the 3 on 2, divide by 3 on 2, plus C. Now when you divide by a fraction, what you need to do is you actually need to invert change to a times and then invert the fraction so flip it over so 3 over 5 and then our next one is x to the 3 over 2 change the divide to a times and flip the fraction multiply by the reciprocal plus c and now you can clearly see that I've got 3x to the 5 on 3 over 5 plus 2x to the 3 on 2 over 3 plus C. So if you need help with your doing this fractions work, do it off to the side, okay? And be really, really careful with your divide by fractions.